This video is a direct continuation from the previous video titled Debris Particles from Destruction Simulation Using Houdini's Shelf Tool. Link in the description. In this video, we will continue directly from that project file and demonstrate how to set up the dust and smoke using Houdini's Pyro Smoke Shelf Tool. And I will demonstrate how to set up a simple volume material for this scene so you can see what the smoke looks like after rendering. Okay, we have something rendering, we have something going now. Now it's time to add in the smoke, the pyro. So again, deselect everything by just clicking somewhere blank. I usually like to do that just in case you press the shelf tool and it accidentally adds a bunch of nodes to the wrong object, which you can actually undo too. So if that ever happens to you, if you accidentally, like, I don't know, clicked this and then clicked ground or something or rigid bodies and it starts like adding a bunch of nodes to wherever to everywhere you can just control z to undo it but you have to wait until it finishes so you have to notice whatever is on the bottom on the bottom left corner and it'll say python evaluating or cooking or something like that you have to wait until that finishes and then you can control z and it'll undo all that or just be careful and remember to deselect stuff by pressing something empty here. We're gonna go to the pyro FX. I'm gonna be using the smoke cluster. Okay, so I'm gonna click this. Now I wanna use, I wanna add smoke wherever um, there was the emission debris points. So I wanna, um, I'm gonna escape out of this first now. I'm gonna stop it for a second. Now I want to add smoke to this node, but not this node. Why? Because I want emission these. I want to reuse these emission points. These emission points are very important to me. I want smoke to come from these emission points. I don't want there to be so much dust that. Because once something breaks on impact, that's where most of the smoke and dust will come from. Rather than having smoke being generated from these debris particles, because the dust has settled. It eventually settles down to the ground and you won't see it anymore. But if we use these debris particles as emission points for the pyro, for our smoke, it will just continue generating more and more and more smoke. But if I use these, this debris source, you can, as you can see, these points don't always exist. They don't exist at the beginning because, let me show the rubber toy. The rubber toy is over here. It is not hitting anything. Sorry, I'm just going to turn off the ground plane. So the, there's no points. We don't have any points. We start to get points when we, on impact. So that's frame 16. So we have points. We're starting to see points. This is where I want smoke. And then we get more and more debris points. I'm going to turn off everything else. So we get more and more debris points. So that's where I want the smoke to be. But eventually, these points disappear. Because the fractured pieces are starting to... Um, the age has outlasted. That's what we have for this, this lifespan. It eventually dies. And I want our smoke to eventually die as well. So we can reuse um, this debris source node. This is a very useful node to reuse as a trigger point for the smoke. So I'm going to deselect this once again. This uh, click a blank area. Go to the pyro FX shelf. Click the smoke cluster. And it's asking select object whose points will be used for billowy smoke clustering. Press enter to accept selection. Now, it's really hard to select. Actually, we cannot select the debris source because I turned off the render flag here. So I can't really click it on the 3D viewport. However, I can click it on the node. So we can actually use the ne node network to select the object. So let's click this. However, our mouse, after we select the node, we have to move the mouse back to the 3D viewport before we press enter. So now we can press enter. 
and it'll add all this here. Press L to organize this. Pyro import. I'm just going to organize this a bit. I'm just going to play it and see how it looks. I'm going to take a look inside the pyro soon. Can't really view it. Let's take a look. Sorry, I think I pressed the wrong one. <laughs> I think I'll, I needed Billowy Spoke. So this is a good time to show off that Control Z. <laughs> so Control Z, Control Z, it, it will undo all my uh, panel changes too. It, it's actually going through each mouse click. So Control Z, Control Z. You just keep controlling Z until you see these three nodes disappear. Okay, I think that did it. So I control Z it all the way. So let's just play the animation to make sure it's still working. Okay, it looks good so far. So click somewhere empty again. Pyro FX. Click billowy smoke. Now it's asking us to select our source debris, uh, source points. So I'm going to select this. Mouse over the 3D viewport, press enter. I think this is the right one. I'm just going to play it, just to make sure. Okay, yeah, this is the right shelf tool. Okay. Just going to make more real estate. I just want to show you. This pyro, this pyro simulation, um, uh, the pyro shelf tool, it didn't generate a third uh, node. It only generated two. That's because in our debris source, because this was our um, target geometry. This was our mission geometry points. Let's go in here. Now, this was generated by the debris, debris shelf tool. This was generated by the pyro shelf tool. So the pyro shelf tool has appended nodes after the debris shelf tool. So I'm just going to briefly describe what this, what the pyro shelf tool has created. Let's start with here. This is our debris points. This was generating the debris emission points. This was detecting the impact when it breaks, when our geometry, when our geom uh, rubber toy breaks apart. This was detecting that and generating points upon impact. And what this pyro source node does, if I open up the geometry spreadsheet, it appends, it, it adds three, uh, two new point attributes, a density and a temperature. So if I click here, we never had a density and we never have a temperature. I'm going to filter it. density, temperature. So there's nothing here. But when I click this, this pyro source node, the density and the temperature is here. So that's what this node does. It just creates these two point attributes. It gives it a default value of 1.2, which is not very interesting. So that's what the next node does. It adds, it randomizes those values. So now we have more interesting density and temperature values. Next, it takes those points. So I'm just going to take a look at the noise. This is 2,192 points. The rasterized no a node takes those points and turns it into a volume. So if we look at what the rasterize has, it has four points. And they're all points for the th volumes. They're all volumes. So that's what the rasterize node does. It takes the points, takes this geometry, and turns it into a volume. Or it turns into many primitive volumes. Put the render plate here. So we see our this becomes our source volume for the pyrosim. And over here is the source emission particles for the pop net. So this is definitely a debris. Uh, this one is definitely a debris source for both pop and for the debris particles and the smoke. Now let's go into the pyrosim. This is a very basic pyrosim. It's it just has a pyro solver. It has a pyro object. This is all. These parameters are now fine tuned for billowy smoke. That's what 
this um, shelf tool is doing. So I'm just going to leave it as the default value from what it came out of the box from the shelf tool. The volume source. Now this is sourcing it from our density. That's our emission volume. Now let's go in here. That's this guy. That's this right here. Let's go back. This gas resize, it's to optimize the pyro simulation. I know I haven't done any pyro simulation videos. I might consider doing some in the near future, but I'm not going to go into too deep detail of this because that's the out of the scope of this video. Let's go back up. And this pyro import, you probably guessed it. This is just a dot import in here. So it takes, it extracts all the data from the simulation and brings it into this context. So one, we can render it. So let's give it a try. Let's go to the render view. Let's hit the render tab, uh, render button. Now I see a blur. This is not very helpful. This, this blur is not, doesn't look like anything. I actually made a, a video on how to render volumes. So you can take a look at that. Um, I won't go into too much detail, but I will show you how to set up the, uh, the volume material in Redshift and how to render it in Redshift. We're rendering everything with the pyro, with the smoke. It's not looking right. Now that's because I turned off the ground plane. I want to turn, I'm going to create a new ground plane. I'm not going to use the generated ground plane. I'm going to create my own. Come in here, I'm going to add a grid. Let's make the grid a little, I'm just going to keep it actually. Let's just, okay, let's give the ground a, um, a material. This is not looking as expected. It looks like a blob right now. That's because there's nothing for the light to bounce off of. And so it doesn't really look right at the moment. We're not seeing any depth. Let's fix this by going to the shop. And I'm just going to add an architectural um, material. This is for the ground. Let's come back up here. Let's add it, uh, that over here. Now, it's still, the, the smoke still doesn't look very impressive. For one thing, let's add, there's no material. We don't have a material that's assigned to the volume. So let's add that first. We're going to need a proper material. There's a rich of volume material. I'm just going to go back up and I'm just going to attach it as is. Still no change, but we need to configure this. Now, if you see my previous video on how to render volumes, you'll know that we need to bring in the volume material is highly relies on our volume primitives. So if we go back up here, that's, that's all this information. But since we have the render flag on the other guy, this, this one, so that's this information, density and temperature. That's what we got. So let's bring that back in. Go to the volume material. Now density is already set up out of the box. Let's put in temperature over here as the mission. Let's render. Okay, that's starting to look a lot better. But let's turn it down a bit. This is really strong. So let's 0 0.2, I think. Too little. Okay, I think that looks okay bit of dust. The particles seem a little big now. And the density seems a little low. I'm going to turn up the density 10 maybe. 100. Doesn't seem like it's doing much. You can actually change the remapping. So when it captures, it's remapping the density values from 0, 1. That's whatever in existence from our geometry to the shader. 0, 1. Well, I want to keep the shader 1 to 0, 1 to, um, I want to keep the new min max as is. The old one, I want to capture more of the density, so I see more of a gradient. So I want to make this range a lot larger from 0 to, like, I don't know, 40? Okay, that's a lot better. So we see more of a gradient. It, it is a little lighter, but you can see dark and more light and more dark areas. There's a gradient level. Let's go back up. I think the particles is a little big. So let's turn it down a bit. Okay, that looks a bit better. That's about it. That looks pretty decent. You can tweak the volume material parameters and the 
particle size a little bit more to get a more appealing visual effect. But the main focus of this video is to demonstrate how to use the shelf tool to quickly set up a destruction scene, fracturing the geometry, adding debris particles, and adding smoke. And my favorite feature of the debris shelf tool is definitely the very useful detecting impact on the debris source node. Not too bad using the shelf tool. This was done with just a few clicks. I know I did a lot of explaining in between, but if you take that all out, this can probably be done in just two minutes. All we did was we clicked the shatter, the model, we did a shatter. We did a shatter to fracture the rubber toy. Then we turned it into an RBD simulation using the RBD glued object shelf tool, and then added a ground plane, and then in the rigid bodies here, we had uh, debris to add the debris particles. And then we added another ground plane to the, the pop net. But uh, the pyro here shelf tool, we used the billowy smoke one to add smoke. So this was just done in a few clicks. If you take out all this explaining, I think you can do it in just two minutes. Thank you for watching and sticking to the end.